Hey everyone, I wanted to just take a few minutes to talk to a neuroscientist because I had some questions recently in my practice. We were talking about the amount of fear that people seem to have these days. And I happen to be sharing with some people in my practice how, you know, when we're in a state of fear, it gets really hard to be nice and kind. And But when you are actively practicing kindness, gratitude, we know that it changes your brain, it changes your health. And I was going to write an article and I thought, why would I write something when my jam would be talking to someone? So I called up one of my friends who was a really, really brilliant woman. Dr. Monique Andrews is a neuroscientist. And we're going to talk for a few minutes about the differences in our brain function when we are stressed and afraid versus when we are in a happy, loving, kind place. But also if you are in that stressed, fearful place, what can you do to get yourself out of it? So thank you, Monique, for taking a few minutes of my time today. Thanks for inviting me, Dr. Melissa. Always happy to chat with you. So, you know, let's talk quickly about the brain in stress, the brain in fear. What actually is going on that would be helpful for people to understand and how it changes their behavior? Yes, sure. So, you know, when we are in a state of fear or when our stress is elevated, which is certainly just about everybody these days, mm -hmm. um, what happens is your body goes into protection mode. And our sympathetic nervous system, our fight or flight, our alert system actually signals the brain that the body is in a state of distress. And what that does is it activates a part of the brain called your amygdala. And your amygdala is kind of like the brain smoke alarm. It literally alerts your brain. Something is something bad is going to happen. And what that does is it starts to engage other systems. And in fact, it sends a message to your pituitary gland from your hypothalamus that uh, engages your stress system. So it increases the amount of cortisol and adrenaline in your body and puts you into that fight or flight mode. But the problem is when that happens, you know, if you're being chased by a tiger, that's awesome. But if that's revving all the time, then we get into these states that we are, we become more anxious. We become even like you said, less feeling like we want to be kind to others. We're not in a joyful place because our body is literally waiting for something really bad to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. I, I was joking. Like some people are just not very nice people, but all right now I'm assuming that most people, you know, and being an optimist, I'm like, people are good but they're not behaving in ways sometimes that are really kind to other another, to their neighbors, to, you know, you know, people on Facebook, wherever they're connecting because they are in this physiological state, right? Yeah. And it's really hard to get beyond that. Like when you are feeling a lot of stress, it's not, it's not just something in your head. Well, it is because your brain is driving it. What I mean is it's not just a psychological thing that's happening. It's a physiological thing. And I don't say that to give people permission to not be nice, right. but you know, what I'm saying is there's a reason why it's happening. And so maybe we can have a little bit of bit more compassion for mm -hmm. one another during these stressful times, but there's also things that we can do to shift our physiology. Mm -hmm. And that was a really big reason why I wanted to connect with you. It's like, for me, when I see that someone is, is really um, fearful, I try to kick into that compassion, you know, and I think about what is going on. Is that person's health at risk? Are there, do they have some dynamics in their personal life that are maybe making them a little more anxious, you know, and, and maybe if we can all behave that way and trust that there's a reason why people have, you know, some of this fear right now that, might be reasonable to them and not reasonable to others, but that's just human connection, right? Everyone should be entitled to their own learning and understanding. And when people are being attacked unnecessarily because of how they think or what they feel, sometimes like, okay, what is going on with that other person? And this is what the purpose of this conversation is, right? It's like, they might not be their best self in this moment because they are coming from a place of fear and anxiety triggered by the circumstances. Yeah, and I would, I would say just to your point that when people do have chronic elevated levels of stress, their health is at risk because it's in these individuals that the cortisol levels remain high for a sustained period. This is actually the type of condition that leads to chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all of these, what are, you know, lifestyle associated illnesses. Basically what they're saying is, is our state of stress, our physiological state contribute to these type of comorbidities. So, you know, what kind of things can people do to change that when our body is literally, it's part of our primal brain, we are wired to react that way, you know, and in fact, 
the way our body survives is that our brain is kind of like Velcro for negative thoughts and Teflon for positive, and they just slide away. So we have, we're preconditioned to focus on the negative. So how can we shift that? And, you know, there are a number of things, obviously making sure that you're getting adjusted and that your nervous system is working as best it possibly can is critical, eating well, moving your body, but how we can also use our mind to shift our physiology. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'd love to dive into that because obviously if you're feeling, if you're watching this and you're feeling anxious or stressed, you know, first we want to remind you to like be compassionate to yourself and to other people around you and understand that, you know, they might be in this physiological state of stress and anxiety. However, if you're feeling this way, yeah, what can we do? What can people do to take themselves out of this and help them start to be a little bit more at ease and peace? Yeah, so one thing that is recommended a lot is to have a practice of gratitude. Now, what might that look like? I'm a big fan of the journaling practice. Now, have, telling that to somebody right now who's in a high state of fear and they're freaking out in the store, you know, at the grocery, in the grocery line. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to whip out their journal. So, you know, something that I recommend to people that you can do anywhere that's the easiest thing is actually is to use your breath. And, you know, people have been using breath work for millennia to change your physiology. And it's literally as simple as taking three like conscious breaths where you inhale and exhale very slowly and deeply. And you just have to make sure that your exhalation is a little bit longer than your inhalation. So for example, you might breathe in for four seconds and then hold that for a few seconds and then breathe out for twice as long. So in for four, hold for maybe five or six seconds and then breathe out over eight seconds. And what that does is it turns down that fight or flight, that sympathetic system and brings up the rest and digest the parasympathetic three breaths. If you took a minute Mm -hmm. just to stop whatever you're doing and to breathe and get centered, um, that can help. Is that enough to change your whole physiology? It is in the moment. Would Mm -hmm. it be important to create other healthful, calming practices in your life. Absolutely. A daily practice of meditation, journaling, a gratitude practice, you name it. But in the moment, anybody anywhere can stop and breathe. And, mm-hmm. and it's honestly that simple. It's funny. It's almost one of the, the first things I say to people, if my friends are stressed or something, I'll be like, breathe, just breathe. <laughs> so it is a simple thing you can do and uh, you can do it anytime, any place. What about getting outside? Oh yeah. Nature is like religion, I think. And, you know, getting outside in the fresh air, if you can get close to a body of water and get your feet on the ground somehow, that's a bit harder in the winter time. Mm-hmm. But if we can get grounded in nature and studies have actually shown changes in the areas of the brain that are responsible for our sense of well-being, for our sense of gratitude and compassion, fMRI studies looking at the same areas of the brain when you meditate, when you exercise, when you breathe, just getting out in nature creates the same kind of changes and moving your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we know these things are good and they put us in this state of ease, peace. Can we talk for a second then about the positive effects physiologically of practicing gratitude? I mean, it lowers inflammatory response, right? Cortisol, um, you can tell me a little bit more, but why yeah. we want it, Why should our aim yeah. be to be they in the happy, healthy state of peace and ease and gratitude? Yeah, they've done these great studies at a university of Wisconsin. This guy, Richie Davidson, who people that study consciousness um, would, would know him. Uh, he did these amazing studies with monks looking at them practicing compassion and what happens in the areas of brain they're responsible and it's incredible to see the shift in a, in a monk that practices meditation. It's almost instantaneous. It might not be instantaneous or in you or I or the average person, but the ability to shift um, brain chemistry, body physiology in terms of inflammatory biomarkers like interleukin, C-reactive protein, all of those things that we look at to say how well the immune system is functioning, just practicing gratitude can change your health outlook as well as your mindset, obviously. 
Mm -hmm. And And if there was any time, I mean, practicing things that are good for your health, as far as I'm concerned, is something we should implement into our lives all the time, but particularly, you know, right now. So wherever you're at, wherever you find yourself listening to this or watching this, I hope that you've taken some of these tips to heart and you will actually implement some of them because if more people were kind and taking care of themselves or healthier, I think we'd be seeing our communities healthier in general and happier. Yeah, and I think I would just really encourage people to just try it. That simple breathing exercise, four seconds in, it, you hold for seven, it's called four, seven, eight breaths. And uh, even just do that three times. And I think you'll feel your heart feels calmer. And then, you know, you'll be able to give more to the people around you, be kinder to your family, your friends, your loved ones. And I mean, every we all just want that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. I know that you are a busy, busy woman and I appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks so much.